is dead. Now we have the West openly making a threat towards China. We could, you, we could, you could see the empire failing, like kind of like flailing its arms at, at its last breath. This is Stoltenberg now that are threatening China with sanctions because it's worked so well on Russia. China it's, is trying to get it both ways. They, China is propping up the Russian war economy. They are uh, sharing a lot of uh, uh, technologies, uh, microelectronics, uh, which are key for Russia to build missiles, uh, uh, weapons they use against Ukraine. But at the same time, uh, China tries to maintain uh, normal economic relationships uh, with uh, European and NATO allies. So you think there should be sanctions, perhaps? At some stage, um, we should consider some kind of economic cost if China doesn't change their behavior, because now China is the main uh, supporter of Russia's war effort, uh, uh, war aggression against Ukraine, the biggest war in Europe since uh, the Second World War. And at the same time, they're trying to have a normal relationship with European allies. And this... So this is kind of just kind of up your alley. That we're 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 entering a phase of World War Three, of which uh, we're starting to pick fights at the East Asians. I mean, of course, Taiwan's heating up, but it's also because we have Korea, Vietnam, South Korea, uh, not South Korea, but that's under our thumb, but China that are arming the Russian war war effort. There's two giant sides coming together. Uh, battling it out. By the way, um, Himbo Bad Cookies wants to see your tips. Just letting me know. Uh, I, I I don't know if we have time for that tonight, but uh, yeah, let's uh, we'll play it by ear, buddy. We'll play it by ear. We'll play it by ear. We'll and now, just today, we had a new round of sanctions coming out. <laughs> Ur- Ur- Queen Ursula herself. She's announcing a 14th, the 14th, I can't even, you can't even put that in your hands, the 14th round of sanctions against Russia. This hard-hitting package will further deny Russia access to key technologies and will strip Russia of its further (laughs) energy revenues. Tackle Putin's shadow fleet and shadow banking network. What the fuck? And you would think, you would think... That if the sanctions were hard hitting, they would have worked the first 13 fucking times you did them. She when said they announced hard, these, Howard. Yeah, I know. She said, she said hard hitting package. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to teabag rush everybody. No, um, I mean. At what point is this just the illusion that they're doing anything? I feel like a big portion of what the West is doing right now when it comes to Russia and especially China, like we'll see, is they want to keep maintaining the illusion of control. This is the equivalent of uh, that dude that, that fucking gets clapped within the first 10 seconds of a Call of Duty match, and he, he's like, oh, sorry, it was lagging. It's... It's the same. It's the same fucking thing. Oh, my controller battery died. You know, they're they're trying to they're trying to keep like the facade going. They know. Well, all of these people know. They they see the writing on the wall. They know that their empire is crumbling, and the rest of the world is moving on without them. And new empires are rising, and will likely be the future. Like them, hate them, whatever you want to say. The reality is China will most certainly be the next great empire of this planet. And other people, other countries know that too. It seems like you have to understand our rulers are not just incompetent. They're arrogantly stupid as well. And Jeffrey Sachs talks about this as well. There's a level of arrogance in the United States leadership that leads them to believe that no matter what they do, they will never suffer the consequences of it. Yes, because... So here we go. We have the entire rest of the world banding together against what? The United States. This is happening. Yeah. Russia and North Korea, just yesterday, signing a mutual pact to defend each other with military. 
I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's fine. I was I I just got excited and blurted shit out. You were making a point, so that's on me. That's not on you. Again, just squirrel brain. I didn't I didn't I didn't get tea bagged enough uh, today, so I'm I'm lacking in the concentration. God damn, someone nobody's allowed to clip this or I'm blocking you. Just saying. Um No, um <clears throat> Here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Like the like the West this is kind of uh I believe Caitlin Johnstone made this point at one point where it's like it's kind of like leaving a relationship with an abusive person. Um the worst is when you finally fucking leave. And this is kind of what the world is doing to America. And they are all arrogantly stupid, but that's because for the longest time, they haven't had to think. They haven't had to really strategize that much. Not really. They haven't really had to um, really plan that much for anything because they've had this fucking stranglehold on the world. So they've operated with that in mind. They've hired people with that in mind that they don't really need to work that hard on developing their empire because they have a stranglehold on the world. And now they're they're losing the grip on that stranglehold. And we're starting to see just how fucking incompetent all these people are because this is a time where they need to plan. It's where they need to have intelligence, when they need to think and act and, and plan for the future. And they don't have those skills because they haven't needed them because that's what happens when you have a gun to the head of the rest of the world. You don't need those skills. And also they're trust fund babies. Like we had – like so we used to have smart leaders like Henry Kissinger and like people like who are like not like morally smart but like you know mafia type smart. Who like – and who like they knew what they were doing in the sense of like – you know, both both cover up. I mean, they killed a president. I mean, either way, not that has nothing to do with Henry Kissinger. But I'm just saying, you know, we we've had competent leaders in the past, but right now, what we have is trust fund babies and these nepo nepo maniacs who literally don't know anything because they were born into this elite society, and so. The only thing they can do is fail their arms. And so naturally, they're calling it a, a danger to the world because two countries met with each other and made an agreement. How many agreements have we made? We haven't, we haven't occupied Congress. And so this is really interesting to me because, I mean, this is – you know Russia and North Korea border each other, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a I have a world map. Do people and I not know this. If we if we look at a map, let's pull up a map. I hear Destiny loves these things. Yeah, but we're gonna pull one up that's labeled. Let's go. Let's let's have fun with maps today. We had fun with maps uh, another episode too. So let's let's keep going with the the fun with maps. Here we go. It's the World Atlas. This is just for fact checked. Fact checked. This obviously. So this is Israel right here. <laughs> this is That's, Gaza. Yeah. So obviously, obviously, this is what this is the. This is the West Bank down here. And then yeah, this that looks, Lebanon. You have to talk so, faster to sell that. You got to be like, you can, this is West Bank. You can, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they have they have this tiny border here. Uh, but they're neighboring countries. That's not mm -hmm. a normal, this is not an, this is not like an abnormal thing to happen. I mean, of course, like, it's it's coming with you know a round of like escalating tensions. But you know what's a neighboring country to America? Canada. Do you not think our leaders meet regularly? They have to. 
They share a fucking border. They have to meet regularly. Their economies are interwoven. Like, they literally like, depend on each other. Yeah, with exports. Yeah, like you gotta you gotta either fucking get along, or try and take over one another. You can't just sit there and not talk to each other. You can, but it would be unbelievably not lucrative. And why wouldn't you do that? You're exchanging resources between each other. Like, it's it's the biggest no-shit sandwich of all the no-shit sandwiches. So let's watch a little bit of the reaction from the White House. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, Put military this in parade my veins. going on in the Capitol. Grandstands are going up, uh, going up. You can see those sort of along the edge. Construction taking place in one of the main squares in the city as well. And this partnership, newly close, is cemented in one key thing, taking down the United States. Look no farther than what Russian state television is pushing tonight. Billions of people would be happy to stand in line to get the opportunity to strike the United States. Today, the weather is ideal for conducting nuclear strikes against NATO countries. We only have one target, the continental territory of the U.S. There's no nuance or ambiguity there. And state-controlled television in North Korea is saying the U.S. and other hostile forces are bound to meet unforeseen disaster. So you hear all that rhetoric, right? But that rhetoric is actually turned into video. We've seen nearly identical simulations of nuclear annihilation of the United States. Look for yourself what they've shown on Russia. You were going to say something? (laughs) Sorry. Is there an easy way to get... Because I'm curious. That, that sounds like Yomi Park level fucking like hyperbolic. Is there an easy no, way? This to is, this is some sickening wild shit. Like this is, is like, they have to fear monger. They have to be like, they want to destroy us all. Is there some way? Because, okay, those videos were people speaking in Russian, I assume. And someone just talking over the Russian with English. Is there an easy way to just feed those videos into um, into some kind of software? I, I'm going to look into this because yeah. So I, the videos, I highly, I, I, so I I translate videos from Russian all the time. Mm-hmm. You can do it with AI, and you do the okay. voiceover too. Because but I'm not, I, I don't know. I, if, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily doubt that. No. They probably said it, but like they're they're addressing Western hegemony as it exists. It, that doesn't mean they're going to nuke the United States. Granted, we are a very aggressive nation, and I wouldn't blame them. To be honest with you, I, but like, I'm just saying I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't put it past them if they literally the whole play was just. This is a video in Russian. We're just going to talk hyperbolic shit over it and just feed it out there. Well, it's clipped. I mean, it's, you know, they share one piece of the context. So, I mean, of course. Russian uh, state media television is on the left. uh, And on the right is what you see in North Korea. These are simulations of U.S. cities going up in a giant mushroom cloud of nuclear annihilation. Nuclear strikes taking out U.S. cities. It's grotesque. How much of that is real, too? I have no idea. And the Russian-North Korean military partnership is deepening now beyond rhetoric and video to reality. Kim paid Putin a visit last year, touring several secretive space and military facilities, at one point toasting Putin and vowing to have uh, him back in what he called Putin's, quote, sacred struggle against the band of evil in the West. And just three months ago, North Korea TV showed Kim and his daughter, they were back in Pyongyang, riding in a luxurious new limousine, a limo that was a gift from Putin. And on Russian state television now, they are fawning over Kim. In the West, they are persistently calling him a dictator, but our attitude is different. Kim Jong-un, the light of the nation. And this relationship is now affecting the war in Ukraine. Just a short time ago, Putin spoke to a North Korean newspaper, so he's giving all this access to them, right? And he said, quote, we highly appreciate the DPRK's strong support for the Russian special military operation in Ukraine. And Russia is relying on North Korea in Ukraine. Make no doubt about it. I mean, according to South Korea, North Korea sent 6,700 containers of equipment to Putin. Uh, Those could be filled with more than 3 million rounds of artillery shells, more than uh, 500,000 rounds of multiple rocket launchers. There are also North Korean missiles being used. In return, the White House believes Putin may offer North Korea fighter jets, surface-to-air missiles, armored vehicles, and more. That has Washington growing increasingly concerned tonight. What we are concerned about, Trevor, is the deepening relationship between these two countries. There could be some reciprocity here that could affect security on the Korean Peninsula. 
Kayla Tausche is out front live outside the White House. I want to begin, though, with Will Ripley live in Taiwan. And Will, another Kim Putin meeting now less than a year after the last one, right? And it had been a several live in Taiwan uh, before that. They appear to be growing much closer. Because they need each other. Don't don't care what this guy is um, <clears throat> You know what's so, really funny? Everything, everything, everything American or Western in general corporate press fear mongers about other countries doing, they've done themselves. Like, yeah. Yeah. They, every I, single I, time I they're ever, like, this is really scary because like they're going to do X, Y and Z. Just ask yourself a quick question. Are are the are the countries saying this actually guilty of the things they are worried about? Because what they're really trying to communicate is that. Hey, only we can fucking do this. These guys can't speak this kind of rhetoric. Only we can. And only we can bomb the fuck out of other countries and commit horrible atrocities upon other civilizations. That's us. Okay? You guys aren't allowed to do it. So we're going to brainwash these boomers and, and exactly 3.4 liberals under the age of 30 into believing that they're the bad guys because this is also a deflection because they don't want you thinking of all the atrocities they're committing. They're like, well, no, look over here. Look at what these guys are doing. These are the bad guys. It's the classic fear of the other of, uh, that's inherent in human nature that's been exploited for thousands upon thousands of years. So. It's it's it should be clear. I mean, you know, you know, from World War II history, you know why we're on the North Korean side. But um, you know, I think it's important to know kind of uh, how we've got our start involved in the Korean uh, civil, you know, whatever divide they have right now. Uh, th this video is important. You know? A lot of a lot of the people are still brainwashed about North Korea. I mean, that's, they probably get that more fear about North Korea than Russia. Uh, they see like, uh, Kim is like, this, like kind of like, you know, I see him more like any other like leader of any other country, like the, like the prime minister, of, like Albania, you know, like even fucking, uh, Macron or some shit. They're all the same. They're all like, all, all, you know, autocratic leaders that do basically behave basically the same. Um, depending on the country. But just watch this video. The history taught Americans is that North Korean forces attacked South Korea in 1950 and almost overran that new nation until the US military came to the rescue. This is true, but does not explain that the United States government wanted a war. Major American industries had suffered with the loss of military business after the end of World War II, while wealthy Americans sought an excuse to expel the communists from China to recover their businesses. These groups conspired with the administration of President Harry Truman to lure North Korea to attack. American President Franklin D. Roosevelt assumed that China, under Chiang Kai-shek's leadership, would become a great allied power. After World War II ended, a Chinese civil war resumed, and by 1949, the communists had defeated the American-backed forces led by Chiang. See the short video link below for details. Who lost China became a big political topic in the United States, and President Harry Truman was criticized by those who had demanded direct American military intervention. Corporate America lost billions of dollars invested in China, while the United States lost its key ally in Asia. U.S. military spending plummeted after World War II, and easy profits from government contracts disappeared. The communist threat was used to create and promote a U.S. national security document called the, quote, United States Objectives and Programs for National Security, known as NSC-68. This strategy called for tripling American military spending to contain communism, but had little support in Congress with war debts to repay. To contain the Soviet Union had invaded Japanese-occupied Manchuria at the end of World War II and pushed into northern Korea. The United States agreed to a joint occupation of the Japanese colony of Korea with the 38th parallel designated as a temporary boundary. The Soviets supported popular Korean guerrilla leader Kim Il-sung, who formed a government in the north. He was a prominent leader of the resistance to Japanese occupation for two decades. 
Major industries owned by the Japanese were nationalized and Japanese collaborators purged from official positions. This led to protests by wealthy Koreans who lost property and jobs. An American occupation force composed of 45,000 men arrived in September 1945 to occupy South Korea. Army Lieutenant General John Hodge was a good combat leader but had no experience in civil administration. He disliked Koreans since many were deployed to support the Japanese army during the war. Hodges issued an order to his men to, quote, treat the Koreans as enemies and allowed Koreans who served with the Japanese colonial government, army, and police force to remain on duty. Thousands of Koreans who resisted the Japanese occupation lived in the South and formed people's committees to run cities and towns before the Americans arrived. These were deemed communist by General Hodges and smashed by his police. The Americans flew Sigmund Rhee from Washington, D.C. and anointed him as South Korea's leader, even though he had not lived in Korea for 40 years. He was a wealthy Christian, having earned a Ph.D. from Princeton, and was married to an American. South Koreans saw no change as the Japanese departed and were replaced by American rulers with the same colonial government and police force. A rebellion began as guerrillas took control of most towns and demanded land redistribution, a purge of Japanese collaborators from official positions, and a unified Korea. Unions organized strikes that led to economic turmoil. General Hodges was under pressure to send American troops home and hurried to create a South Korean army to help maintain order. By 1948, it comprised of six divisions led by officers who had served in the Japanese Imperial Army. The Rhee regime, with the support of the U.S. military, began a violent campaign of repression. By 1949, over 100,000 people had been killed and 100,000 political opponents imprisoned. Mass executions were common. Koreans in the North were angry about these events and the American effort to retain South Korea as a colony. Kim Il-sung deployed military forces to the border to show support for rebels in the South. American leaders showed no interest in Korea as they focused on countering communist movements in Western Europe. American troops had departed South Korea by 1948, but American military advisors remained along with the American CIA. As tensions mounted, North Korea massed troops and tanks on the border. The CIA and military intelligence reported this threat to Washington. War may have been deterred if the United States had announced that it would intervene militarily to protect South Korea if necessary, but nothing was said. The United States sent no additional military equipment to South Korea and made no promises to defend it. On January 12, 1950, Secretary of State Dean Acheson told the press that, quote, Korea was now outside the American sphere of influence. The South Korean commander of troops along the 38th parallel in 1949 was Kim Sok-won, he graduated from Japan's Imperial Army Academy in 1915 and rose to the grade of colonel by 1945. He had chased after Kim Il-sung and other Korean guerrillas in Manchuria in the 1930s. Kim sok won had been decorated by Japan's emperor, Hirohito, for leading campaigns against Korean guerrillas. As border fights intensified in 1949, the top U.S. commander in Korea told his superiors that South Korean military forces had started the majority of fighting along the 38th parallel. See the link below for details. The American CIA secretly encouraged these attacks. On June 25, 1950, South Korean troops attacked northward, capturing the city of Heju, a mile north of the 38th parallel. North Korean forces along the border included 70 tanks, something the Americans surely detected with their observation aircraft. <coughs> Kim Il-sung knew that Rhee had little public support and gambled that the South Korean army would collapse if his army invaded. North Korean soldiers crossed the border on June 25th, and by June 28th, they were in Seoul, just 35 miles away. The South Korean army crumbled as most soldiers deserted. North Korean forces marched southward unopposed and could have secured all of Korea within a week. Korea would be united with little bloodshed as South Korea was freed from decades of colonial rule. This did not occur. President Harry Truman authorized General Douglas MacArthur to rush American combat forces from Japan. He did not seek a formal declaration of war from Congress by stating this was no more than a police action. Yet military spending tripled and conscription resumed. Many government officials were elated by the out. Do you see how even presidents, like more than 50 years ago, they also, without any congressional approval, just started wars all over the place. Break of the Korean little, War. Little, like, little breakouts. Secretary of State Dean Acheson was a former Wall Street and DuPont Company lawyer, pictured here with Truman. He told colleagues that, quote, the Korean War came along and saved us. According to I.F. Stone's book, Hidden History of the Korean War, first published in 1952, the United States deliberately incited the North to attack 
that led to a three-year war that left every Korean city destroyed, seven million refugees, two million Koreans dead, and cost the lives of 36,000 American soldiers. Don't you love this country? By the way, South Korea, one of the highest suicide rates in the world. Actually, the top, the number one country on top of the list of the global suicide rates, South Korea. Okay, but that's only because all the other countries. <clears throat> this is what drives me insane about statistics for any country that like you're trying to say has some issues. The cope from people is just like, well, that's because the other countries are making up their statistics or like lying or hiding their statistics. And it's like, should we not trust statistics at all then? Is that your play here? What's your play? Because like, <clears throat> because like, there's nothing stopping other nations from also lying about or hiding their statistics. It's like this, it's a, yeah. this weird, like, 10-year-old cope. But yeah, that is that is objectively correct. It has an incredibly high suicide rate. We can move on to bird flu. But you could see, I mean, from just like that little snippet of history, it's, the situation has been encouraged and started since the beginning, dude. Our actions. Um, <clears throat> I just want to yeah. you. I'm pretty sure this is copyright free. But They rode in a they rode in a luxury car today, man. Or this was yesterday. But this is over. Western hegemony is over. It's done. The game is done. The jig is up. It's done. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's one there's really just one of two ways this can go. You know, they can just kind of grab their billions and say we had a good run and kind of slink away before it gets too bad for them. That's what they're going to end up doing. Or they can or fight they can, Mars. They can flip the table over too. They can go, you know what? If we We're can have this take world, everyone down with us. Is that yeah. If we can have this world, nobody can. That is a classic trope of narcissists and psychopaths. That's a Samson option in Israel. That's their nuclear yeah. policy. It's literally, it's literally, if, if I can't win, nobody can win. But yeah, play this. I fucking love this shit. This is so good. They see me rolling. They hate it. Like Coke Love, next to the PlayStation controller. Nigga, full clip in my pistol love. Send a jack up into a coma. Hurry, ain't no crazy like crazy bones. Just tryna bone, ain't tryna have no babies. Rock clean the scout, so I pull in ladies. Laws on patrol, and you know they hate me. Your music turn all the way up into the maximum. I got to beat the sun, niggas try to jack the sun, but we packing something and we be half a ump. We have a nigga locked up in the maximum security cell. I'm gripping old. Oh, music loud and I'm tipping slow. I'm steady twisting like get this dough. Please pull up right behind in the city. Oh, yeah, by the way, so they gave him, they gave Kim Jong-un, gave Putin two dogs as a gift. Look at these cuties. That's actually adorable. 
So the, so these are so these are a rare <laughs> Korean like if they're called like Ponsang or something, but it's a rare it's a rare Korean breed that he just gifted them. He just gifted them two dogs. That's, That's a nice gift. <clears throat> That's cute. Packing something that we can have for uncle. Have a nigga locked up in the maximum security cell. I'm flipping old. Oh, music loud and I'm tipping slow. I'm just steady twisting like it just dope. Please put up right behind and it's in his throat. Windows down, gotta stop pollution. City changed it, it's like who is that producing? It's the playing skills when we got the crews. It's got warrants in every city except Houston, but I still ain't losing. They hate it, patrolling and trying to catch me riding dirty. Trying to catch me riding dirty. Trying to catch me riding Dude, they're almost running off the off the cross cross line. You see that? Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, this fucking. Dude, you sucks. gotta be careful, man. Look, at, dude, dude, what did they drive, dude, bro? I know it's so based. It's like this when just... when they hear like it's like when it's like when I ran and like the Houthis chant like "Death to America." I'm like fucking hell yeah, man. Fucking burn. I mean, I even I'm you know I'm a dual citizen. So <clears> like, just get out. You're from Canada, so I mean like you know I think maybe we personally don't have like huge attachment <laughs> but i know there's people who are kind of stuck here um i mean listen I, i've got but i think i think we all kind of have to face the reality that like and due distance kind of talks about this too like there is no pull I, I mean i do want to say that there is no political solution to this it has to fall no. i mean and lennon talks about it, it has to crash and burn before it gonna get it's gonna get any better and come up and you know, a lot of us, a lot of us have to come with, come in like face with the reality of, because this is this is going to affect Europe too, and I'm, you know, European citizens. So, you know, either way, both the the Western hegemony, I don't know how I don't know how this affects Europe and whatever countries or whatever the ways they decide to deal with it. Um, that's why we're anarcho Brexists. Yes, because this this is this is. Well, we've been operating on uh, agenda of pure evil, terror, and violence. But yeah, exactly. You know, he's 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 not even driving. He, Putin, what are you doing, man? He's not. He's he can't drive. He can't stay on the fuck on his the fucking right lane. What's going on? Do you think maybe? Do you think maybe he's just like flexing? I don't know. It could be. That's, that's this is a luxury car. Like a luxury Korean car. I mean, 